Hey, this is Nuggie from Guardian Tales Guides, and I'm going to go a little bit into Relics and Expedition because it's kind of complicated and I figured everybody could use a hand because it took me all day to really kind of figure it out. Anyway, these are what you're going for. There's three main things. There's the basic, sub, and party options. Basic, you can get these stats. These are all max, by the way, and you can't get all of them at one. You can get two of them, and it could be attack and attack and defense and defense or crit and crit. Um... And the sub options, which are way more interesting, PvP damage, damage to bosses, so obviously raid, arena, and then relic obtain chances, obviously, for expedition. And these two are for expedition as well, the melee raid, JOE damage. Mystic resistance, this is just kind of a stat that doesn't affect you in combat, but is needed to get into the certain um, areas within expedition. Also, like the party-based stat means that if everybody in your party has this type of relic, Guidance of Truth, any one of those, you will get that relic bonus that you've already got down there. This and this cannot be re-rolled. So once you get these on there, and once you get that on there, that stays. These can be re-rolled and will be re-rolled. And you'll re-roll things with magic powder, which we'll get into for a second. Into a second. So farm the first day you get your account you're gonna make 10 crop tiles a forge and a house and that is how it is these crop tiles every 120 stamina you spend you need to plant more and collect what you collect from these seeds that you plant is magic powder magic powder is how you re-roll your relics and you're gonna be re-rolling them a lot right so you're gonna to want to re-roll a lot of magic powder or a lot of uh, relics, so you get the magic powders. And in rare circumstances, you can get a golden petal, which you will use in the shop to get you uh, rare or better um, relics, which is just an easy way to, like a pity system almost. So anyways, um, <clears throat> so if you want to reroll one, you come into the forge, say recover, we don't give a damn about that. 14% or 14 rerolls. Boom! 6% melee damage, which is the cap. All right, Mystic Resistance went down. Don't care. But that's how you re-roll, right? So someone could be better, right? Cool. But that's kind of how it is. Um, I'll actually go into that one more time. So, as you can see, only certain stats are going on right there. You see all that? These are the only ones you can re-roll. And you're supposed to be able to get a second one of that, but I'm not sure when that actually occurs or how that occurs. Um, the other thing that's very important here is that the, like you're going to want to make a set of these, right? So this has defense on it, so I don't want it. I think I'm going to want this one, the Eternal Unity one. I'm going to want four of those for raiding because I want to raid. And I'm going to want this stat on there. And I'm going to want triple or like double crit chance. Like I think only this will give you the double skill up at the top. But uh, and that'll give you one, and that just gives you a low one, right? So you're going to want these guys, and you're going to want four of them. If you're raiding, you're going to want it crit and crit. Well, like, I'm sorry, this. You're going to have crit down here, which is great. You're going to want two sets of crit hit chance up there, um, because that will give you a total of 7% crit if you have both of those, and you're going to want to go for the right substats too. That's what my goal is, raiding, right? All right, moving on. Um, like I told you, you can get some golden petals, right? Golden petals you would find or you would make use of, right? Dun, 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 dun. Let's play together. Here, golden petals you use in the mystery relic box. And what you do is you put it in there and you will get a rare thing back, a rare relic, which is blue, presumably. Um, yeah, unique blue whatever so here we are that's great um the arcane shards are what you get from breaking down things that you don't want breaking down relics which you can do in the forge as well um this you can get to apply um you can buy these specifically with arcane stones and this will allow you to apply a, a certain secondary skill that you want so if you know you want damage to bosses you can use this to say this piece will now get damage to bosses and you can do that in the forge as well, but we'll get into that a little later. Expedition. All right, cool. So as you can see, this one says Mystic Resistances. I need 640 to be in there. I have the quota. This is the first district. 
This one's 720. The first one has zero, right? I have 792, and that's just because all 12 of my people actually have relics on, and they all have some inherent resistance. I've got one unique relic, and that gave me 220 resistance. So if you get those, it bumps you up pretty fast. Um, as you can see, I've made it through the fifth world. Um, the sixth one, I just don't have the resistance for it yet. Um, if I got another blue or whatever, I could probably pick it up. Let's see, what do we got here? Oh, we got some stand we can work with. Sounds good. You also kind of get little, by these quotas, you get things, rewards, just by hitting certain thresholds. There's also these things, proof of courage, wisdom, swiftness. I'm not sure what that is, um, but I'm sure we'll get there sometime. And I'm not sure what kind of relic that is. Whatever. Still things to learn. Nonetheless, what we can do, though, presets. I'll show you. You get a lot of new preset options. Um, and you set it up to the point where, like, these are your expedition sets. Relic, obtain chance. You want that on every single relic you have. Because at the max point, 5% per, you will have 60% chance to gain more relics while you're in there. Which is unbelievably good and that's what it's all about is getting the relics getting the the better relics and making your set right because i'm going to want to set for rating maybe i also want to set for arena maybe i also want to set for expedition um and also you can see here eight percent attack on enemy kill absolute gold you want that that's crucial right they there's only 10 of those cards in the game so far as i know so you have to deal with that um Yuse and Claude are monsters in Expedition. Claude is absolutely ridiculous. You're talking a lot of mobs coming at you at all points. Um, there's other videos. I might do an Expedition run in here. But Claude hits a huge area and does a decent amount of damage. He's absolutely awesome. You will be switching between these during the fight. So you can actually train this chain into that. Um, and it, it's interesting. If the boss has enough health, like the fifth world or the first parish whatever the hell it is you will find a boss that will you can make use of multiple team chains so you can chain 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 and switch into this team chain chain something like that right so that being said um these are the two aoe teams that i have they just run through kill stuff this i have specifically so i can switch over kill a boss and then switch back this is just skill damage on it and killing a boss these are what kills the majority of everything else in the, in the uh, expedition. I will show you how to do one real quick. Now, expedition, um, the way it's going to work is there are, um, there's four chances for little boss, special bosses to come out. They're really just like mini bosses. They just stand there and do damage. Most bosses don't do much more than that. But... You do have to get there. There's always a ton of mobs. Um, you're going to get a bonus for the, the amount of people that stay alive by the end of the fight, the amount of time that's left, which is a big bonus, and how much you switch your party around. So those are the things, right? Um, right now, we're going to do enter. Now, I could sweep one. It's my best score is 250, so I'll sweep one real quick. All right, I got one relic. It's not too bad, right? A little bit of gold, whatever. So we're actually going to go in, and I'll show you how this is played. First off, like i kind of done this a few times. You end up practicing a great deal. I'll turn down the volume a little bit. So Claude, start cl Claude group off. Minute 40. You start kind of moving around, right? Just AOEing or whatever. These big groups is where Claude really shines, though. So you can see I can switch over here, and I will. Because I'm getting kind of bonus points for switching around. And I can switch again, but I'm not going to. At some point, very soon, it's going to say there is a event node available. All right, event zone. So I'm just going to go find it. As soon as I hit it, I'm going to switch over to Claude. Just because A, switching helps. And I want to make sure that my other guys aren't kind of getting stuck and dying in the middle there. So I'm going to switch back. And then we should have another event tile there. What this does is there's a little weird fat guy. It usually comes in. Oh, I didn't switch. That's weird. All right. So, and this guy, you just got to hit him real quick. 
before he actually explodes. So we're just going to wait around. we got 33 seconds. We still have two bosses to hit. we got to go down here. Then we're going to go to this event switch thing. So we really want Claude right now. Because he can mop it up, right? So we got like 9 seconds left. We've killed all the bosses. We're a little slow on the time, though. So maybe 2.20? 2.15, all right. But that's kind of what it's like, right? So that's one stage of expedition. Here's the breakdown. Um, it's usually like that. With my account, I can't hit 2.56. I probably could with some RNG, but it's really, really tricky. Um, I think I got 2.50 is my highest on this. Um, so let's see here. This actually does rank server-wide, too, which is super interesting, right? So you can actually look at it, like, go here. Where is it? There you go. So the highest is 381. I don't look like they don't, they don't even care about my ranking. It's so bad, right? But so it's kind of interesting. Now, the other thing to note here is that you got this guy right here, right? These are the ones that's good. These change dramatically, right? So let's go to the, the fifth area, which is really hard. So you got different ones over here. I put water because the boss is water and everything else isn't. Um, I don't have enough mystic resistance for this one right now, but I've already done it, so I should be able to just get back in there. So let's let's give it a shot here. We'll enter. Yeah, that's fine. So this one's tricky. Because at some point in here, you're going to fight all those four bosses to really get your maximized total, but you're also going to have to fight. See, and they, they interrupt you, these things. They're a really big pain in the butt. Oh, see, look at that. There you go. Claude died because he went in the middle of them. Right? And it doesn't seem like much, but that was a huge pain in the butt. <laughs> and, like, you, so you're trying to maximize AoE and try to get the um, as many points as you can and all that so yeah it gets a little dangerous and I've already got oh look at that it takes skill to run into an object over and over again so then you've actually got a boss here right so the boss which is actually weak to water you can build up your stun you can see Vera's stun still existing over there right so you're just kind of heading it and this doesn't hit as hard because it's just, you know, these aren't all water characters I'm working with here. But as soon as I switch over to Vera, the boss goes down a lot faster. Now we're just going to make it way tougher, just to show you how bad it is. So yeah, you could actually add in another boss right here. But like, this is, you know, I'm just kind of messing at this point since uh, Claude died. But this is kind of how it is. like. It's a little tricky. It's not the easiest thing in the world. So we're going to bit. We're going to probably get like 50,000 or something like that. No, 126. So, oh, we get the map piece. Cool. These are super rare, by the way. So the maps, if you get five of them, you get to go into a special place, which I've not gotten five of them yet. So I don't know what that special place looks like, but you can go right here, Hidden Wonder. So basically you get, you get, um, I guess 20 of them you have to get. Um, or, huh, five to enter, but you need 20, or oh, whatever. Uh, you get Mystery Relics, Ooh, ah, and a better rate, presumably. Um, so that's kind of how it is, right? Like you're just pushing through these things. I told you I was going to show you how to do the inheritance. So if you want to do inheritance, let's say um, I really want stuff on this item, right? And I want to go ahead and I say crit hit multiplier. I don't have crit hit multiplier on this. I want to do it like that. I would take this. I'd hit confirm. And it would say crit hit multiplier. It's going to change and I hit it again. And then that would get crit hit multiplier. The main, the reason why you do this 
is um, you would like you you get the one that you want, the type of relic, but it doesn't have the damage done to bosses, whatever, and you don't want to roll it. So you can actually just take uh, take those things, get the exact substat you want, and just roll with it. No pun intended. You can also go to breakdown. And uh, that one we rolled before, let's see, kind of kind of tricky to break down something where you don't know what you're actually breaking down. Okay, yeah, let's see that one. Well, real quick, what we'll do is we'll endow that one. So we got a new relic. All right, two for zip. Well, that's pretty crap. All right, so we did that. Now we're going to go ahead and break it down because we don't care about that one. That sounded terrible. So then we get an arcane stone, which, as I showed you before, you get enough of those, you can do some stuff. And we get some stamina here. All right, cool. But that's pretty much the expedition thing. You're going to be doing this a lot, like like a lot, a lot. You're going to want, depending on if you're an arena, raid junkie, or whatever, you're going to get a lot of that stuff. You're going to be doing this every time, every day. Um, with the evolution stone change, you're basically going to hit your... Or like you're going to basically do 100 stam all day or every day on evolution stuff for a little while. And then the rest of it, you're going to blow on this or item dungeon or whatever it is you're going to do. But this is going to get you, when it all comes down to it, when it's all done and said, you get ex for raid damage specifically, you get exactly what you want. Crit, crit, damage to boss, crit, hit, multiplier, and crit. It's going to be about a 19% overall damage. So you're going to see players hitting 1 billion damage within a raid season within a few months. Definitely. Maybe within the next month on the next raid. So nonetheless, that's the expedition system. It's super crazy, super exciting. And the best part is you can practice it all the time. It's not easy. So practicing is actually pretty fun to do. So either way, hope it helps. Adios.